So this is a calculus three problem we did the other day in class. Actually, I asked them to do it at home and see what they could do with it. Well, it's a very time consuming problem. And the, the idea here is just to be perseverant in what you're doing in order to get through this particular problem. Um, I tell you, the key is simplifying your derivatives. So here we have a two, three-dimensional surface, and we're trying to figure out where a puddle might form. Uh, we'll take a look at the graph. Uh, we have an online program at Monroe Community College put together that we'll take a look at the surface to make sure that our, our numbers are accurate. So in order to determine where a puddle will form, we have to find the local maxes and mins, and that occurs where the gradient of h equals 0. All right, so where the gradient of h equals a zero vector. So in order to find the gradient, I have to find h sub x and h sub y. Solve, set them equal to zero and solve. And then I have to find all the critical values, find the discriminant, and then um, put it all together. Again, the hard part is keeping on focus, uh, paying attention to where you're going, and simplifying. So let's start with h sub x first. I know it's going to take several videos, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't think you're going to want to stare at this one for very long. Oh, h sub x of x, y. OK, so that means that x is the variable with which I'm taking the derivative of. All right, so if I take the derivative of the top with respect to x, that's going to be 7y. Derivative of the top times the bottom. minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Now, the derivative of the bottom is going to be the exponential itself times the derivative of the power with respect to x, which will be 2x. And then that will be all over e to the x squared plus y squared all squared. OK. Now let's. Um, Make some notes here. Notice that there's an e to the x squared plus y squared in both terms up top. So let's factor that out. e to the x squared plus y squared times 7y minus 14x squared y, all divided by e to the x squared plus y squared squared. And then one of those squares gets rid of one of those. And so h sub x, 7y, minus 14x squared y, divided by e to the x squared plus y squared. OK. That's the first derivative. Let me check it. 7y minus 14x squared y. Yep. All right, now let's do h sub y. Because <clears throat> again, I'm trying to put together the gradient. All right now, I've done these already. I'm just <clears throat> looking to make sure I do them right. So now I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to y. So now y is the variable and x is the constant. So derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So again, the bottom is the exponential itself times the derivative of the power with respect to y, so that'll be 2y, all over e to the x squared plus y squared squared. I can see in each term again, there's an e to the x squared plus y squared in each one, so I'm going to factor it out and simplify. So e to the x squared plus y squared times the quantity 7x minus 14xy squared all over e to the x squared plus y squared squared. One of those squares cancels with that. So I'm left with 7x minus 14xy squared divided by e to the x squared plus y squared. OK, I'm checking my answer. It looks like I'm right. So. Again, when you're optimizing a function, which is exactly what we're doing here, we're trying to optimize this function. Where will the puddle form? The puddle forms in local minimums. 
So we're trying to find where those are. Um, in order to find where the local minimums are, we have to set the gradient equal to zero and determine the x, y values that make that possible. So now we need to solve the following equation, or system actually. Solve the system. 7y minus 14x squared y e to the x squared plus y squared equals zero. And then 7x minus 14xy squared over e to the x squared plus y squared equals zero. So this is f sub x. I got it from up here. You can see that they're the same. And then this is f sub y. I got it right here. And so now I have to find out where they're both zero at the same time. Now what's nice about this is that um, whenever you have a rational function that's set equal to zero or ratio that's set equal to zero, all you have to worry about is making the numerator zero. So that means that this system becomes 7y minus 14x squared y equals zero and 7x minus 14xy squared equals zero. That's what we were actually trying to solve. So we take a look at this very carefully. Um, whenever we have something set equal to zero, one of the best things to do is factor. So I'm gonna take the numerator and denominator and factor it. So I can factor out a seven y, seven y one minus two x squared equals zero. And then down here I can factor out a seven x. I'm left with one minus two y squared equals zero. Okay, now continuing on, uh, what I have here are several things happening. So I have that seven y can equal zero and one minus two x squared equals zero to make the top part zero and then seven x equals zero and one minus two y squared equals zero. So let's take these in pieces. So seven y equals zero, seven x equals zero, y equals zero, x equals zero. So let's think about that ordered pair. When y is zero, f sub x is zero, and when x is zero, f sub y is zero. So uh, let's list the critical points over here. So one critical point is zero, zero. Uh, keep on, keeping on with that idea, I now have to think about one minus two x squared equals zero and one minus two y squared equals zero. So that system implies that uh, two x squared equals one, which tells me that x squared is equal to one over two, two y squared equals one, so y squared equals one over two. So from here, I'm getting x equals plus or minus one over square root of two and y equals plus or minus one over square root of two. So this gives us all kinds of options, but the thing is we have to make sure that when I plug in plus one over square root of two and for x here and here, and then I plug say plus one over square root of two and for y here and here that I'm still getting zero. So let's think about the ordered pair. Positive one over square root of two, one over square root of two. So let's just take the positive ones first. When I plug in positive one over square root of two here, it makes that zero. And then positive one over square root of two here just changes the value. But when I put one over square root of two here, the second one here, it makes that zero. So that ordered pair will work as a critical point. If we continue with this process, we actually end up with four points to look at. Minus one over square root of two, one over square root of two. Uh, one over square root of two, minus one over square root of two, and then both negative, one over square root of two, negative one over square root of two. Now they may all work or they may not all work. Just check. If I have x being negative, it makes that zero. 
because you take a negative squared, it becomes positive, and then that will force that to be zero. And then here, if the y is positive, that will be zero from our previous experience. So this one's also a critical point. Keep going. X is positive, that's zero. Y is negative, well, negative squared is positive, so that also becomes zero. So that's another critical point. One over square root of two minus one over square root of two. And then the last one is this guy. Well, again, if X is negative, then that becomes a positive value, and then that becomes zero. Y is negative, that's positive, and then that becomes zero. So every single one of these ordered pairs will indeed make my gradient equal to zero. So there's one, two, three, four, five critical points, which you know makes sense actually when you take a look at the graph. Um, but right now, let's just be happy with these critical points and uh, move on to the next step.